Now, ladies and gents, uh, moving onwards, many of you will already know that this year's Responsible Business of the Year is Anglian Water. And that business is led by the person I'm going to introduce to the stage in a moment. What you might not know, and he will blush when I tell you, is Anglian Water has also recently been voted one of the best places to work in Britain. And I don't think these two things are a coincidence. Its chief exec is actually rated number one in the UK on Glassdoor, and he definitely doesn't like me telling you that. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to the person who leads that business, but as you will hear, is very involved at the grassroots. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Simpson. Good morning, Peter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, today, I'm Peter. Um, we're going to talk about Anglian Water, and we're also going to talk about a very special place called Whiz Beach. Now, before we start, um, can you just clear up a question one of the audience had earlier? Is there a beach in Whiz Beach? <laughs> no, unfortunately not. So tell us, just remind us, A, why Whiz Beach? And of course, this is in Finland, in Cambridgeshire. So, um, back in 2012, uh, I went on a seeing is believing visit in the east end of London. And um, whilst there, uh, I spent quite a lot of my career working overseas, actually. I've seen some quite awful things in terms of what happens in society. But I never expected to see some of that stuff in the east end of London, in, in one of the wealthiest countries in the world, in one of the wealthiest cities. I saw you know, young adults who'd never been outside of more than about half a mile of where they live. <coughs> lack of opportunity. Um, and it really opened my eyes. And I came back into our region and thought, well, I wonder where we've got the equivalent of that. And with uh, Business in the Community, we did quite a lot of research and uh, through the Business Connectors program, sort of looked across the region to map where we had a similar place. And we came across Whiz Beach, right in the heart of the Fens. Um, it's a town which uh, used to be a an inland port, a very famous inland port that used to have a lot of trade. Over the years, uh, the ships got bigger, the port stopped getting used, um, we lost the rail link to it, and it's been a cycle of lack, of lack of investment. And what the sort of statistics that hit me at the time were that the rate of youth unemployment was 50% higher than it was anywhere else in our region. Uh, when we looked at things like social mobility, the report this year on social mobility puts Wisbeach at 306, or Fenland at 306 out of 324 local authorities. Um, youth unemployment, lack of opportunity, these are all things that really kind of registered with me. But some of the, some of the things that also hit me were, if you looked at, for example, um, longevity, you'd find that uh, a man living in Wisbeach can expect to die five years younger than if he lived in Cambridge, which is 40 miles down the road. So all of these things sort of stuck in my mind, and it got me to the place of saying, well, what difference could we make? What, what could we actually do to make a difference? So we happened upon Wisbeach that way. And at that point, a circle has been drawn around Wisbeach on a map. How important was it to you that you already had people, things, assets in Wisbeach? Well, it was right at the heart of our region, so it's, you know, it was amazing to me that actually that we had this right in the heart of our region and we hadn't noticed, so you know, that, that was a bit of an eye-opener. But I think the, the other thing that, that struck us at the time was it wasn't just our asset, it was all the companies that we work with. And one of the things we were quite keen to do was not to sort of do something at a very superficial level. What we wanted to do is to have a deep engagement. We realised to have a deep engagement we would have to have more than just us, so we brought our entire supply chain on board. And we realised we'd have to commit to more than just a few months. We'd have to commit to this project for years, because you can't shift the dial, the dial on these sort of things. So we absolutely made a decision to make an impact. And we took on board essentially all of our top tier suppliers who had resources in the area, who had employees who worked, you know, worked and lived in Wiz Beach, and brought them into, on this journey too. And in that sense, you're a coordinator, you're the convener. Uh, that's the big picture, that's the background. In very practical terms, what were your very first steps? What did you do next? Well, we, we used the Business Connector programme. Uh, we appointed, with our supply chain, we said, well, that's the first thing we do is find a Business Connector, find the right person. Uh, in Russellville, we definitely found the right person. Uh, 
put them into the area. And I think the first thing you learn as a business connector is to listen, you know, to, to two ears, one mouth. And that was really important because it wasn't about us going into Wisbeach and telling the people of Wisbeach how they should run their community and what would be good for them. It was about going in there and trying to understand what the issues actually were. Um, and then once we got some understanding of that, to formulate our priorities. And, and very early on, we, we happened across Keith Smith, who's here today. And, and Keith was one of those individuals who we saw as a really inspirational community leader who was doing, already doing some fantastic things. And so we realised, actually, if we hook in and start working with Keith, we'll begin to get a better understanding of what difference we can make. Excellent. Well, as you know, there are some formidable people on the ground in West Beach. So one other person we're going to ask up to the stage, who's that? And why have we invited them today to tell a bit more of the story? So it's Keith, Keith Smith. Um, Keith was one of the very first people we, we came across when we were in Wiz Beach. Uh, the very first step we took in Wiz Beach was a, quite a, a modest one. It was focusing on developing a, a community hub, a community centre, but it was very much Keith's idea. Um, so Keith's here. Right, so let's get Keith up. But also I'm going to ask Anne Hill, who is the newly installed uh, head of the Thomas Clarkson Academy. And I'm going to ask both Keith and Anne to come up and join us. Please give them a round of applause. So join us on stage. This is... Please. Welcome, lovely to see you. Thank you. Uh, Keith, Peter's set a bit of the scene, but Wiz Beach for you in your own words. Tell us a bit. Okay, Wiz Beach is a rural community, 30,000 population. 30% of it is now Eastern European. Um, it's a place I love. I'm actually from Oldham, um, and I moved to Wiz Beach as a teacher, um, and I brought my family up there. It's a place of great need. So as Peter's already said, um, deprivate the social mobility. If you look at our free school meals, um, we're 324th out of 324 for the social mobility there. Um, it's a place of passion. We believe we can change things, but uh, we need to change. I want to zoom in a bit to what you feel needs to change and some of the problems worth solving. Uh, before that, tell us a bit about the ferry project. This is a project that you run on the ground. Okay, so as part of the need to change, Ferry Project started in 1999. It was a Churches Together response to homelessness. We, we support homeless people. We started with £300 and 11 volunteers, um, and we believe there was a few people homeless in this beach. Let's fast forward it to today. So we're now supporting 250 people a year. There are still 16 people a night sleeping rough. We support 62 every single night getting off the street. Five weeks ago, somebody died on the streets of Wisbeach from the infection they caught from living out rough. We have tented communities in the backs of our room um, off the A47, where 15 people are living under tarpaulin um, on disused mattresses on the mud. That's a little of the example. Yeah. And that's what Ferry Project did. So we've, we've helped homeless people. We turn over this 250 people a year. We then went into the prevention agenda, and we've now run the community centre and working with Angling Water, we've already done a job cafe where we've got 270 people into employment within two years. We've supported another 2,000 people. And all the time we're trying to deal with those issues because we believe that we can make a difference. The challenge is we can't do it ourselves. Yeah, and I want to hear more about that alliance in a moment. And you're newly installed running Thomas Clarkson Academy. Uh, as you came to Wisbeach, some of your first impressions. So I've been there since September 2016 um, and I, when I first got there, was utterly horrified about the way the community spoke about the school. And uh, if I can give you an example, it was referred to me, with Beach, in a meeting as a carbuncle on the backside of Cambridge. And I was very, very cross because how dare people speak like that a, about a community, but specifically about children within that community. Because what hope and aspiration to have with those children? Absolutely. And in terms of the academy itself, just paint us a picture, um, some of the opportunities you see, some of the challenges okay. the academy faces. Okay, so obviously it serves an area of high socioeconomic deprivation, and the school and its predecessor schools has been in and out of Ofsted and adequate categories for more than 30 years. Um, and those parents who can afford to do so, um, there is a history of them 
taking their children, driving their children more than 15 miles over the border into the grammar schools that are in counties that surround the town. Um, and there is intergenerational educational underachievement, low paid work and unemployment. So there is that challenge and there is also the challenge of low aspiration. Um, and that's where this becomes so important because I know of Anglian Water from my previous school and the work that they did there, but the work that not only Anglian Water but One Alliance are doing in our school frankly is phenomenal in terms of raising the aspirations of our children. Can I give you an example? Yeah, please do. Yeah, it's just about us, yeah. Okay. So, um, <coughs> last year, for the first time, so at the end of so, uh, August 2017, sorry, we sent four children to Russell Group Universities. That's the first time in the school's history that any child has gone from that school to a Russell Group University. And the work that the business community are doing in terms of the softer skills with, uh, with our students, so interviewing students so that they are interview ready. Russell himself has been in and interviewed our sixth form students. This year we've got a girl who has just had an interview uh, to in medicine at Cambridge. It's entirely possible, but like Keith said, we cannot do it on our own. Yeah. And on that, <laughs> Keith, the first conversation, somebody says, I'm a business connector and I'm here to help. You in your heart, you think that's a bit weird. Those first, I'm just asking, the first impressions, sceptic, thank God you're here. What did you think? Okay, first impression is who is he? By the way, where is Russell? Russell's Russell's a round of applause for Russell, there yeah, he is. Yeah. Business connector. Now. Okay. Okay. So the first question was, who is he and why is he even talking to me? Um, and then he asked me some questions and was prepared to listen. So I told him about this speech, and he listened. And then he said something which is amazing, which is, how can I help? And you go, mm, okay, heard that before, um, don't know about this, let's give him a small test, let's just say something. Okay, what was that? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, well, we, we, we asked for help with the Queen Mary Centre. So the Queen Mary Centre, community centre, county council property, they allowed it to run down, they said nobody wants to use it, we'll demolish it. Community comes to us, we're a reasonable sized charity in our area. Can you do something about it? The answer is, love to, can't, we need some help. Russell, can you help us? Can you persuade the county council to give us the lease? Can you help us with other bits and pieces? And they delivered on it all. We've done some figures with the community mayor centre. 48,000 people will go through its doors this year. The whole population at least one and a half times through the building. 72 community groups using it. And they delivered on it. And just so I understand, Keith, in practical terms, what were they able to bring to the table? Okay. People, resources? Practical terms. Yep. Peter talks to Chief Exec of County County Council. Guess what? County Council listens to him. I can shout for a year. He ignored me. He goes in the room. They listen. Okay? Right? We, we need some simple things like redecoration. I've got 30 staff. Anglin Water have got thousands of staff. So they ask their staff, would they get involved? They come and redecorate the building. They come and help with the gardens. They do the, the fences. So now we've got a community centre that people are prepared to come into because it's a nice place. Okay. So very practical, but also influential. Okay. Can, and, and on that, Karen, keep going. Well, it's just that I, I, I need to stress, for me, the biggest difference is people listen to you. People listen to Peter. I've been in the voluntary sector 20 years. They do not listen to me. But, well, I need to understand this, Keith, because I, we've spent a little time together, you are driven, <coughs> successful. Why don't they listen to you? I want to clear it up. Uh, 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 I would say power, influence, they, they don't care. To be, so I come along, I say things, if you blow me off, so what? Right? Blow Peter off. Now, that's a different kettle of fish. They blow you off. That is a different kettle. They do not want to upset you. Peter, you'll be rid here. I am going to change the vernacular a little bit here. However, this story, as it appeared to you, you know, is there a set? What can you do that Keith can't do? Because you are a team, it seems to me. But you must be aware of your own power. Well, I'm not aware of any of that. I, I think the reality is actually what really comes across in Wispeach is a lot of people working together. You know, and you know, whether we talk about the local MP or whether we talk about the charity or whether we talk about the supply chain, we're all on the same page working together. 
You know, each of us brings something to it, and each of us have different skills and all the rest of it, but we deploy them together to joint effect. And it's probably just worth touching on the impact, actually, because it's gone so much further than the Queen Mary Centre. That was, that was very much early days. We're at a place now where we've got £6 million to do the very latest sort of stage of getting the rail link opened. If we can open the rail link, we'll link Wisbeach through to Cambridge. If we can link Wisbeach through to Cambridge, we start to solve some of the Cambridge housing problems and we start to create and bring wealth back into Wisbeach. We've created, we've done a lot of fantastic work with Thomas Clarkson, but we've also, in Wisbeach, uh, worked with the College of West Anglia and we now recruit all of our supply chains, apprentices, from that geography to feed into the huge demand there is for construction, because there's a massive demand for skills in construction moving forward. And we're recruiting from that geography, directly addressing the issue of youth unemployment. And, and the, you've probably seen a slide cycling around as we've gone through, but there was a slide there you would have seen on the Garden Town. And one of the early things that we wanted to do was to raise the profile of this speech and raise aspiration. You've heard some of the words. But where that's got to is engagement with the community about what they want in their town for the future, which is essentially moving to a garden town. And we've had a guy called David Rudlin develop with the community that picture for the future. And that is very much on the trajectory for where we're actually taking it. So it's, it's a whole different stage and scale to where we started off back in 2013. Now I've got some quite specific questions because we've got limited time. Uh, I would ask you, um, Anne, we talk a lot about raising aspiration. You know, it is, a sort of, it, it is a buzz phrase in very practical terms. What have you learnt about how that can be done? Oh, it's about it's a three-pronged approach. Um, you need students to want to do well, to believe that success is possible, and to engage with their learning. And if you take those three strands, and it's a it's a, a, an approach that where well, you need to cover all three strands at the same time, engaging with businesses enable students to see the possibilities that what is actually out there seeing and what's out seeing there. what's out there and once they know they have something to aspire to there is a real shortage of high paid jobs in Wisbeach and they need to hear and see and understand what is available and therefore the qualifications they ought to be gaining to enable them to access those jobs. And am I right in thinking Keith that raising aspiration doesn't just apply to students? How do you tackle that from your ferry project? Okay, so it's exactly the same. So what people need is opportunity. Aspiration is linked to opportunity. If people have no opportunity, there's no aspiration. If you have opportunity, you can aspire to achieve. So we encourage our clients to think about their futures, actually dream the dream of what would you want to do, and then how are we going to help you to facilitate that happening? And we walk alongside them on that journey. So it's the same, it is very similar. But the most important thing is, the opportunity has to be real. If it does not exist, promise is empty. absolutely. And we've got generations where promises have been made and not delivered. And again, going back to business in the community, angling water delivered. Yeah. That's the difference. Too many people have said things and not delivered. Here we've got some new delivery. Yeah, Peter, on this question. Um, well, I think we all delivered. It's not just about it's a it's a broader team. We're we're, we're part of it. Um, it's very interesting for me, very early on, raising aspiration and vision was one of the single most important things to do. And the very first meeting where we sort of engaged with the community, invited people in and said, well, we're thinking about this stuff, we've got a bunch of people who want to do the right thing together, do you want to come in and talk to us? I think there are three people in the audience. And at that same meeting, the name better remain blank, but at that same meeting, somebody in a very senior position within the local authority said, there'll be no railway in my lifetime. At that same meeting. How so, old were they? I'm not, I'm not going to give you any clues. <laughs> um, but enough time. Um, so, so that was where it was. Now, if I think if I fast forward to where we are now, we can't even hold those meetings in public now in the same buildings. We can't get everybody in there. So we, had to hold them early. We, had, we had to hold them. And the vision, the aspiration, and the enthusiasm. And when you talk to people in Wisbeach, they get it. So the, the emotional connection with the vision. It's absolutely fundamental part of leadership, but it's not just one person, one individual, it's the broader team. Okay, and my final question then, when we run out of time, is how do Peters, or indeed Petras, in the audience, find their Keiths? Because this will be on the minds of many of our guests, and saying, thank goodness you two met, 
but rather than cross your fingers and hope that the stars are aligned, Keith, I'd love to talk from you and, and from you, Peter, because this is our challenge, right? Okay, so Russell went to the local council and said, who do I need to talk to in West Beach? And they raised it. So people like me, uh, you know, we've got a big mouth, people know we exist. So that's one way. You had a reputation, Keith, that's what we're trying to tell us, yeah. <laughs> a good one, Peter. This, this is on the right track, it's sort of social mapping in that way. I think that's absolutely right. I mean, I think the business connector model is brilliant for that. But you've got to get a business connector in there, listening to what's going on. It doesn't actually take that long to work out who does stuff. You know, that they're quite visible, actually. So, but you have to go in and you have to listen, and then you come across them. And I guess the, the lesson that we learned very early on is leverage that. So where you've got people, great people like Keith, already doing fantastic things, link into that, amplify it, you know, bring you know, your supply chain and work out how you can actually connect in with that. Yeah. I think there are so many examples of big businesses coming stonking in and imposing things. And this is the opposite, isn't it? It's listening first. Um, yeah. For now, thank you very much, Peter and uh, Keith. Thank you. Thank you.